really happy to be here with Gregory Vahanian, um, one of my favorite people in the world and who has taken a few of my courses and been in my program, my group program. And I wanted to uh, have him share some of this progress. I think I think all of you watching this will learn from what he's going to share because he'll share some insights along the way of his authentic business building. And um, and then we'll talk about sort of like what he's committing to that we can report on next time. So that the the intention for this is not just a single conversation, but that we're I'm going to bring him back several times to kind of report on the progress along along the way, so that you can kind of see um, follow along Gregory's journey. So Gregory, thank you for doing this. Thank you, George. Yeah, we always have fun talking together. So it's it's great to be here with you. So. Um, so first, I want to I want to uh, you know just thank you actually you know, again thank you for like your willingness to to do this kind of progress interview because uh, not everyone's open enough to to want to share their um, yeah I mean you know insights but also some challenges along the way and how we can all learn from that so I want to give everyone some context for what you do and so go ahead and maybe take a minute or so to share your work with us. Sure. Thank you, George. And in full transparency, it's not just um, I appreciate your gracious welcoming of me and acknowledging my participation. It's it's a very selfish thing on my part, because I know that uh, having some regular scheduled meetings with you is one more way that I support myself in being accountable. So yeah. so uh, great. And, and the fact that everyone's going to watch watch yes. you and expect some great things from you that, that <laughs> continuing that means, great things <laughs> who knows how many additional accountability partners i have that's right <laughs> every single one of the viewers <laughs> that's right that's right yeah so, so yeah. what do you do for a living so i'm a transformational life coach and i support men and women uh, embrace a more healing and empowering orientation to life really uh to me a one way to frame it is transcending the confines of the ego, uh, monkey mind chatter, mm -hmm. and attuning more fully to the wisdom of, of each of our hearts. Uh, on a soul level, my, my experience uh, is that there is none of the polarizing right, wrong, monkey mind chatter. It's a quiet place. It's a peaceful place. It's a loving place where where joy and spontaneity and creativity really emerge. And um, and so it's just, that's what I support folks in enjoying more time in in what uh, what Rumi would call or we think of as Rumi's field. The, the famous Rumi quote is yeah, say that, beyond yeah. ideas of wrongdoing and right doing. There is a field. I'll meet you there. So I'm I'm continuously uh, embracing holding an intention and embracing my opportunities to spend more time in Rumi's field and, and support my clients in doing the same. And how do you do that? What's your modality or tell us more about how you work with them? Sure. Well, it's, it's a, a, an eclectic mix of things, but fundamentally or on a very foundational level um, is my background in spiritual psychology. I have a, a master's degree in spiritual psychology uh, the class itself, uh, at the University of Santa Monica, my mentors, two of my mentors are Drs. Ron and Mary Hulnick, who let us know at the beginning of the year that the class itself takes place on the authentic self level. The authentic self level being that level or that field uh, that, that I just referenced. And so I'm so grateful for that education and an invitation to that I received to go to go beyond sort of polarizing yeah. ideas of things and really to start per perceiving myself, my circumstances, my world mm -hmm. through the eyes and the ears of my heart. Uh, I think th this is a, a, a reducing in terms of all the, the different tools and so on. But fundamentally, um, there's a beautiful quote, a spiritual teacher says that uh, peace is the cessation, the ceasing, peace is the cessation of againstness. Mm. The, 
wherever we're judging, wherever we're condemning ourselves, circumstances, someone else, God, or our idea of the universe, or God, or uh, and a higher power, uh, wherever there's againstness or judgment, that's where our disturbances really uh, uh, arise from. So while while it may involve different 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 modalities depending upon a client's needs and what they're navigating the healing aspect of what i do uh is really based on it moving beyond working with forgiveness in different ways and then transcending uh dissolving the againstness dissolving the judgments so, mm -hmm. so that we can return to a more embodied experience of our innate well-being and mm. our own beloved nature. Yeah, I, that's beautiful. And I'll just say, I mean, having interacted with you um, for over a year, a couple of years, actually, yeah. I can attest to your presence and energy signature bringing that field into each oh, meeting that you have you. so you. so that itself is healing and uh for your clients just your presence itself you know and so the, the the way you choose to um you know frame different situations and guide them along their their life's challenges so thank you thank you for that thank well um share with us uh anything you want to share in terms of progress you've made in your business since we began working together, I mean, I, there's probably a lot we can dif different areas, but whatever comes to mind for you, um, you know, ways you've ways you feel like you're doing things differently than before, ways you're doing things more skillfully, um, and the uh, yeah, any kind of results you want to share is great. But I I always believe that true progress is in the development of skill because that is what creates results long after we meet. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, go ahead and share. Thank you so, thank you so much. Um, there's so, there's so many things. Um, I'm a, you know, I've, I've, while I've been fond of rock and roll bands at times, and I've definitely been fond uh, and have had a devotion to certain R and B bands over the years and different bands, different, different, I mean, I've never thought of myself as a super fan. I am most definitely a super fan of George Cow. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, thank you. I'm, I'm, and vice I'm a, versa. <laughs> thank you. I'm a serious super fan. I, I'll say for context, what brought me here prior to my participation in the Master Heart community, I I was building my business. My business was going well. My coaching practice as a transformational life coach. Um, and I had very mixed feelings about some of the marketing strategies that I was mm -hmm. seeing, including by some of the folks that I admire as coaches. Yeah. But I, I had I had some real discomfort with some of the marketing strategies and so I, at a certain point, just before we connected, I had a revelation one day, which was, I was in a meeting with a group of uh, soul-centered workshop uh, designer facilitators. And I was doing a men's group series that mm -hmm. I had designed and was facilitating. I was meeting with a small group of colleagues. And in the course of a conversation about marketing, the thought popped into my head or the phrase, marketing as ministry and it was a complete paradigm shift for me uh I, I hadn't actually done a lot of marketing before i had done some but i was reluctant because everything about marketing or most of the things that i saw being modeled marketing wise surfaced discomfort for me with sort of a false urgency and different incentive incentives that i thought were contrary to what I'm about. If I'm about supporting people in transcending the the, cons the construct and the, the uh, restrictive nature of the ego, limitations of the ego, to move more into the spaciousness, the expanse and the wisdom of their hearts, their own self-honoring, 
then how presumptuous would it be of me to try to manipulate or or work on their ego to suggest that they need to take not for me to decide so for me it was always like when i would see certain i would go that that feels icky it feels like you know so but when i had this shift i thought to myself actually every touch point could be an opportunity to do what i do every touch point could be an opportunity just to extend the intention of offering a blessing through some content that's shared, some learning that I'm working with that where there might be value. value. And so in that moment, I felt like my world opened up. And so I went online and I Googled authentic marketing and I Googled marketing as ministry. And, and there you were. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And, and there you were. Yeah. And, and incredibly, even one of the the short videos that I saw initially, you used the phrase marketing is ministry. And I went, that's my guy. <laughs> <laughs> Energy signature connection. There we go. There we go. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, I I think that is an it's like a paradigm shift, like you said, like like if more and more spiritually oriented service providers, business owners were to really um, apply their spirituality or their values anyway, their deeper values to their marketing, they'll probably come up with that too. It's just that um, we're taught as they start learning marketing and, and getting advice and um, you know watching videos or taking courses or reading books. It's like, it's like somehow it's like, no, no, no. It's like, they, they get this idea that you're supposed to set aside your values and your spirituality. It's like, you know, yeah, like get them somehow it's justifiable. If I can get them in the door, then I can, then I can serve them something good. Right. Like, but, but the truth of the matter from what, sorry, I interrupted you. No, 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 no. That's it. No. Say, as, as you've reflected in, in our time together, the notion that I think, I think, I don't remember the exact percentage, but let's say 80% of the people that view our content are not going to become our clients, are not going to yeah. purchase our things. So, so instead of presuming or justifying the notion of I'm going to I'm going to work traditional marketing magic to get someone in the door, and it'll be justified by then doing something really meaningful. How about for me? And what you've modeled is serve everyone with no attachment, which has always been my intention, serve everyone with no attachment, trusting, as Albert Einstein says, the most important question any of us will ever ask or answer is, is it a benevolent universe? And if it's a benevolent universe, mm. then there's more than enough. And and uh, trust. So if I serve everyone, whether someone becomes a client, whether there's a conversion of a viewer audience to, uh, on a, is is not the criteria for success. And that's one of the beautiful things. I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but one of the most beautiful, inspiring, motivating and practical things you've modeled that I have modeled from you is this idea of the uh, three stages of content creation. So content as an iterative process where, okay, with a light touch, this is, this is meaningful to me. This is a theme that there's two, three main points here that I think could be valuable and useful to someone let me do a video, let me do an article, let me share something, not with the idea, and maybe somebody will buy in, maybe somebody will give me their email address, maybe somebody, no, let me just, let me be a minister. Let me, let me share from my heart something that I find nourishing, that might be nourishing for someone else, and for, which includes the 80% of the people who may never become clients or, that's not none of my business. My business is to do what I do and and serve folks. Yeah, that's beautiful. And speaking of the three stages, you have 
now culminated your content at this stage anyway into something you're about to birth. You want to share that with us? Oh, sure. Thanks. So <clears throat> I want to give context also prior to my working with you, because my idea about videos and content creation was more targeted, at least the way I related to it was it was for something like the criteria was, well, it's to promote an event. If I was doing a workshop series or it's to, you know, to fill in a blank in case someone missed a particular evening and I wanted them to have the theme. Um, but it was kind of targeted in, in that way. Uh, there was, was always agenda, right? Like yeah, that's the, how we was, learn content. It was creation. service. It was service oriented because that's how I operate. At the, right. But at the same time, with the added thing of an agenda to target a yeah. Soon as you introduced me to this three stages of authentic content creation, the criteria changed, which incentivized my productivity. One way you framed it, you have framed it, is as public journaling. Another way that you've framed it as the criteria for sex success being, am I refining my ability to articulate my ideas? So yeah. In that way, whether one yeah. person responds or nobody responds, I've already won by simply writing the article or doing the video because right. I'm getting practice articulating my my observations. So. I'm I'm already That's in the winner's circle. I'm already in the winner's circle, just having having documented my experience. Yeah. Now, if if then it also happens to serve someone besides myself, that's gravy, and and obviously that's the intention. But but the win is in the showing up, and so so uh, the first rather than you know maybe. 12 videos over a couple of years prior to meeting you in with the previous definition once we connected and i heard you had done like a hundred videos uh, or piece of content the first year i thought i want to do everything george is doing. <laughs> and so by I, this point i've made over a thousand videos and yeah i kind of stopped yeah, counting after a while so. <laughs> yeah and i'm just was referring to the first year i think yeah yeah too. So when when I heard that, I was like, I was so inspired. So the first year, this is, we're just beginning my third year uh, with you in the community. Yeah. The first year I did about 80 videos and then uh, as well as articles and carousels. Um, and then the second year, I haven't tracked exactly the, the, the exact count, but I got inspired by the blog to book uh, program that you offered yes. and uh, recognized there there are books within the content. So I've put together my first book. It's called Accessing the Wisdom of the Heart. The sub subtitle uh, Reflections on Awakening. Uh, I'm. It's a wonderful book. I've already had uh, the advanced copy and yeah. Continue. Thanks. I'm looking forward to actually getting the official thing in my hands. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. I'm really jazzed. Just doing the finishing touches on the book cover uh, today and uh, getting it out for the layout tomorrow evening. It'll, it'll, it'll be released shortly on Amazon and I'm, I'm thrilled. And I have at least two other ones that are coming down the, down the pike. Wow. Um, the seeds have already been planted and I've gotten into since the, int our introduction, I've gotten into a regular practice of content creation, yeah. which I, it's like having oxygen now. It's, it's, it's such a joy and, and it makes every part of my life where I'm learning all the time relevant to particular lessons or insights. So it's, it's uh, ecological. Yeah. Yeah. In, in that way. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Also another thing that I, that have, has come about, I'm a, uh, I'm someone who loves to connect uh, in a heart-to-heart -heart way. Uh, I think prior to joining the program, while I enjoyed connect, just connecting overall, and I, when you first in, introduced the idea of net caring, 
which is much has a much sweeter resonance than networking you know, through social media. I did it very casually because it felt somehow more honest to just do it when I was inspired. And I and I and I did it. But then I started making it part of my business practice, actually scheduling a certain amount of time. Um, it doesn't change if I'm inspired in a moment and, and see something. But I wanted to dedicate a scheduled amount of time each week to net caring. And it's one of the most nourishing things for me. Like it's it's such a joy. And I would I would imagine for many of the viewers uh, who might be watching this, who are for the most part solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, business owners, often in a service practice either as a coach or a therapist of some kind or um, that it would seem, I don't want to be presumptuous, but it would seem highly likely that a large percentage of us have a deep service consciousness and a desire to make a difference in people's lives, maybe sharing learnings and insights, strategies we've discovered to help navigate challenges, whether it's uh, life challenges or writing challenges. I know there are writing coaches and what a pleasure it is. And, and at the same time, as, a, as an additional benefit, uh, good practical business sense to take a measure of time each week dedicated to acknowledging and affirming what, what we appreciate about what our colleagues are doing and what they're sharing. So it's so that that's something one of the things that has changed for me since becoming part of the community and and makes me makes me supports me in, in enjoying that much more of a of a rich experience, not only personally, but as part of my regular weekly business practice. Right. That's great. Really great. And um practice is a good word for this kind of thing, you know, cause it's an ongoing, um, yeah, growing and growing of that muscle of connecting in an authentic way. Um, and with the regularity of it comes, well, naturally it comes growth. So, um, in our final minute together, it's time is flying by already. Yes, I want to, I want to, just... I want to ask, um, Given that I am hoping that those who are watching will come back and watch, you know, the second part, the third part, et cetera, of our of, of this conversation over the course of the year, what would you like to uh, dedicate yourself to? Um, uh, putting putting you on the spot here, <laughs> what would you like to dedicate yourself to? And you don't have to; it doesn't have to be a specific number or anything like that. But if unless you want to, but what would you like to dedicate yourself to in terms of action? or milestone that uh, that we might be able to celebrate next time we get together in a few months. Great. So so in a few months, I was just chronicling what what to propose as an intention or goal, <laughs> yeah. not knowing whether we're talking about in three months or yeah. in 12 months. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, so, say, we'll say a few months. We'll say a great. few months. <laughs> so in, in a few months time, ooh, this is so good, George. It really, because I'm saying it not just to <laughs> yeah, you, which would be yeah. enough, but publicly, it really does make this an awesome container for accountability. <laughs> yeah, people uh, will be people will be watching you. They'll follow you. They'll follow you, and they'll be like, "All right, Gregory, let's see it." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. So my 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 intention and my commitment is is to be very consistent each week with, with minimally uh, two new pieces of content. Excellent. Good. Um, and, and, and where do people, where can people find your content? Sure. So uh, Gregory Vahanian Coaching mm -hmm. on Facebook. And then- uh, I'll, I'll link it below. Thank you. And then also yeah. on, on Instagram as, as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've and I've I want to acknowledge I've had a learning one of my learnings in in the last month and a half to two months 
because it's a first time going through the uh, blog to book process. Yes. I have found uh, that I've been my normal rhythm of posting uh, slowed down in the last two months mm -hmm. because I was so focused on elements yes. involved yes. in the book process. So that's, I see part of my learning opportunity. Like it's been really beautiful and I'm delighted by all of the learning and all of the, the process of bringing forward this book. And I'm making a mental note for next time around to anticipate uh, in the, the extra balance time. of things. Yeah make you know my intention to be to still have time for regular posting of new content while while harvesting and tending i would imagine it's like having one child and then there's a new baby on making sure that that child is still being tended to yeah while while uh yeah the delivery of the new baby is coming forward. exactly no that's great well i encourage all of you watching this to uh, encourage Gregory uh, along the, the the journey of the consistent content. So check out the links below and we'll get back together in a couple months to report some progress. So sounds great. Thank, thank, you, thank so you so much, so much Gregory. George. Thank you. Thank you.